Welcome back. It is Monday, September 16th, and the MLB, our three best bets are on the way. It's Austin joined by Logan. Let's recap how we did on Saturday. As always, we aren't betting uh, MLB on Sundays going forward. It was a one and two day on Saturday, though. Brewers, D-backs over eight and a half might have been the freest wager of the day. I think there was eight runs by the Brewers in the first uh, two innings. Our losses, though. Um, the bottom one, Padres, Giants, both two plus in the first five just didn't come to fruition. It was plus 175. The one that really aggravated me, Logan, Devers over in bases. That was that Saturday game where... They hit him with the pitch in the first at bat. Second pitch intentionally walked him. There was no one in base, and they intentionally walked him. Frustrating. He ended up getting one hit. Got five plate appearances. Got walked twice and hit by a pitch once. There's nothing we can do there. Basically, our season. We make a good read and just get wrecked. But either way, hey, you know what? We have a couple more days left in the MLB season. I know it hasn't been a great year. So it's, it's arguably it's one of our, it could be our first ever losing season across any sport. Which obviously is tough to swallow, but hey, we still got until September 18th. To hopefully turn this regular season around and we'll see if we bet on some playoff baseball which logan and i do love but obviously the season has been great but let's dive into the picks today we got three no parlay of the day three straight bets that we really like and hopefully that we can turn in a two in one day three and no day and hopefully build this into a pretty good week here but i'm gonna start with my first one it's my only game pick and i'm going to the dodgers and braves game and i'm taking the under four and a half in the first five innings at minus 130 on bet mgm now Fanduel is one of the only books that's way too juiced here it's like minus 150. um i do feel like Fanduel is a pretty sharp book the fact they got it at minus 150 sure i love seeing that but i would not play this at minus 150. Minus 140 is probably my cutoff. This could get better odds as the day goes on, as you know, people do want to hammer an over that involves the Dodgers and Braves. But I think it's a slower starting game. Now, if you look at so far in this series, we've seen some good starts from pitchers, bad starts. Yesterday, if you had the under in the full game, you got wrecked with a seven piece by the Dodgers in the ninth. But let's talk about Yamamoto, who will start today. He makes his second start since his return from the IL. He pitched pretty good in his first start. Four innings pitched, zero earned runs, eight strikeouts for a very hot Cubs offense. The Cubs were really good against righties. Now, the Braves, we know. What do you well? What we know is what we don't know. What we're going to expect from them on day to day. Some games they look good. They scored five off Landon Knack, four off Jack Flaherty. Those guys kept walking guys. Yesterday only one earned run off of Walker Bueller, and he walked five guys. Now that is obviously a strategy if you just want to walk everyone and force guys to get timely hits. Braves haven't been able to do that consistently this season. Now Yamamoto is not going to probably do that. He doesn't walk a lot of guys. 89th percentile and walk percentage, also 89th in K percentage. We know he has the strikeout pitches to get out of innings, and this is a Braves team that's never. Uh, I think he could go out there and pitch decently today. He's also 79th in ground ball percentage. So maybe he does give up a single. Maybe he can get out of there with a double play or something like that. We have a chance there. And what I also like is maybe you sometimes see in that third time through the order, that's when the runs can potentially come that L we're one to one through four. Here comes the top of the order for the fifth inning. And that's where you see a three run spot and you're just in shambles. Well, a guy like Yamamoto pitched only he's, he's going to be on a pitch count, only 59 pitches in his first start back from IL. Can't imagine it's much higher than 60. Maybe it's 70. Given that now they're down Kershaw, Glass now might even not even pitch in the postseason. They need Yamamoto healthy in the worst way. A start here is not as vital as a start in October. I imagine that they limit uh, Yamamoto's pitches here. So maybe he doesn't even see the Braves lineup a third time through the order and it's a bullpen guy comes in. So we need, I think he pitches well. Max Fried on the other side, we need him to pitch well. He's had some good starts this year. He's had some bad starts. He's coming off one of his worst starts of the year. 11 hits and four earned runs allowed to the Nationals, a team that sees him a good amount. They rocked him. He has a good chance to bounce back here, though. He's been pretty good at home. His last two starts at home, seven innings pitched in both of them, zero and two earned runs allowed in those two. Um, he's obviously dealt with his fair share of injuries, which is why you might see some home starts that are pretty bad. It's like he returns from injury and obviously takes a couple starts to get under his belt. He's pitched plenty of times back from injury. He's not injured here. He's coming in here, and the Dodgers are a team that I don't mind fading them against lefties. They've obviously had some good lefty numbers, but against Chris Sale, he went six innings pitched, allowed one earned run. Obviously, Sale's pitching better than Freed is this year, but Freed's we know he's capable of similar results and he has good pitches. And if he can actually be on his A game, which in a big spot here against the Dodgers, a big spot at home, I anticipate he'll be decent. He's 82nd percentile in hard hit percentage and 88th in barrel percentage. We think about how the Dodgers just poured on seven runs in that top of the ninth had back to back to back home runs so if he can limit those home run balls and instead it's just singles i feel like we had a good chance given that he is 96th percentile in ground ball percentage if he keeps the ball on the ground i like our chances here he did pitch back against the dodgers back on may 5th in that start in la he gave up he went seven but gave up four earned runs the four earned runs if you look at how they broke down two of them came in the sixth inning the two in the first five were a walk to mookie Betts and a home run to shohei otani 
Obviously, he dialed it in after that. I also like seeing Freed if he gets into two outs with runners in scoring position, allowing just a 130 batting average. So hopefully he can get those timely outs when we need them. I think he pitches well. I think Yamamoto pitches well. I like this under four and a half in this Dodgers and Braves game later tonight. But Logan, you got a money line pick and we need him to win. We'll be back in today. Yep, I'm, I'm fading the, the team you see behind me on the helmet. I'm taking the Brewers money line. Plus 102 odds on FanDuel is your best value there. Now fading my Phillies, a, a strategy that always gets me a lot of uh, attention in the comments, but I, I don't really care. I really like the Brewers to win game one of this series, and there's a good chance. Even if they drop game one of this series, I'm on them for the rest of the series. I think they win this series, and I have to stick to my stick to my uh, gut in that, that one. But let's talk about this matchup, because I think they get it done today. It's going to be Aaron Savale starting for the Brewers, 4.57 ERA and a 1.32 whip for Savale. Now, he's been up and down this year. Obviously, he got he got traded to the Brewers. He's had good starts and bad starts in there. What I like about Savale being more of a pitch-to-contact guy is he will challenge the Phillies hitters to hit with runners in scoring position. Savale is only allowing a 219 batting average with runners in scoring position. That's big against a Phillies team that I, I, I swear watching them sometimes, uh, they, they just get so impatient at, at the plate and they just want to hit you know the three run home runs rather than just put the ball in play and get the, the hit with runner in scoring position. That's that's why I like the matchup today for Savale. He's also slightly better against lefties than he is righties, so he's a reverse splits pitcher slightly. Like it's not it's not a huge difference, but a difference nonetheless. If he was allowing like a 280 to, to lefties, I'd be scared today. He's not. He's he's been uh, better against lefties. Philly's offense too. While statistically they've been great against right-handed pitching, I I didn't like what I saw in in that the how they finished that Mets series. They didn't exactly set the world on fire. I mean, yesterday, uh, what did they score like two runs? I mean, that's that's just not at Citizens Bank Park. I expect a whole lot more run production. And now they're going on the road where you really never know what you're going to get from the Phillies offense. There are some games they just don't show up on the road at all. I think Aaron Savali goes out and pitches a pretty solid start in this one. Maybe five or six innings, one or two earned runs. I would absolutely love that. And then it's on the other side. We have to get some run support against Ranger Suarez, who starts for the Phillies. 3.05 ERA and a 1.13 whip. I don't even need to tell you about Ranger Suarez's most recent start because he, he ruined one of our uh, many parlays of the day. Uh, and coming off a terrible 12 hit four and run performance, it was that was bad. I mean, just as about as bad as they come. That's that's the definition of hosting batting practice. Ranger Suarez not entering this game in good form. He's allowing a 341 batting average in two September starts. Again, what am I what am I supposed to, to see from Ranger Suarez that's going to say, yeah, he's going to turn it around today against a Brewers team that's been seeing the ball pretty well recently. Part of Ranger Suarez's struggles come with runners in scoring position. Only he's allowing a 272 batting average with runners in scoring position. With a, he's Ranger Suarez is not the biggest strikeout pitcher. Yes, he will get them every now and then, but he still relies on soft contact ground ball outs. It's what he's done uh, all his whole entire career. When that runner in scoring position batting average is high like this, you gotta fade. And until you see something different. Uh, I, I have to go the other way. Last 14 days versus lefties. Milwaukee, 22nd in batting average, 11th in OPS, 12th in WRC+. Plus. The reason I give you all three of those stats is because if you only looked at batting average, they're, the fact that they're 22nd, you'd say, Logan, they can't hit against lefties at all. But you would ignore the other two metrics that are also run indicators. OPS is on base plus slugging. WRC plus is weighted runs created. Both those two matter, and the fact that they're slightly outside of the top 10 in those show that they still are able to hit lefties. The batting average might not be great, but the, the other run metrics are there. I still think they can get to Ranger Suarez today. They're coming off a series where they had no problem scoring runs in Arizona at all. I mean, they cashed my over by themselves pretty much in, in Arizona. I still like this Brewers offense returning home to Milwaukee. I mean, they, they put up 10 and 15 runs in the last two games of the series. I still think their their offense will, will be potent. And then if we t even talk about the bullpens, I still have to fade the Phillies bullpen. It's just what I it's what I do. It's one of those those things. If I'm fading the Phillies, I'm fading them full game more often than not. I just never trust their bullpen. I think Milwaukee's bullpen is still the better bullpen. So give me the give me the Brewers on the money line. I like the slight underdog price that we're getting them at home. Love that as my favorite pick of the day. But Austin, you got one more wrap up the video. 
Yep, we got a player prop. There's a couple I did look at for this final spot. I looked at Bobby Wood Jr.'s over in bases, but we don't have a listed pitcher for this tar uh, for the Tigers, so I can't really come out here and give you a great sell job on him. Then I'm going to go to a Padre. We love the Padres. They've been really good. One of the only teams this season have been pretty good to our money. I'm going to one of their uh, players, and it's Jackson Merrill, the rookie. Over one and a half hits, runs, and RBIs. Minus 115 on bet 365. I don't mind if you want to go for a little bit more plus value taking uh, Jackson Merrill's over in bases you take that um i made that mistake taking rafael devers over in bases whereas hrr which was plus money cashed with ease there's a lot more ways to cash an hrr prop than there are bases obviously if, if merrill wants to hit a home run go for it if he wants to get a double sure that's not bad for us hopefully he gets hit in from second i like his matchup a lot today and something that i feel like hasn't been noticed a lot is due to the struggles of jake cronenworth who did i believe just get plunked with a ball as they were trying to pick him off on second i imagine he's still fine but due to his struggles he actually was bumped down on the rotation you know the padres they like to do their righty lefty righty lefty uh type matchup which is why you see you know when they got their pro their ideal lineup in there it's typically a rise then you got tatis then profar switch hitter machado so righty lefty righty lefty and then it has been cronenworth but recently, they switched it to Jackson Merrill uh, in the first game in that five spot. He hit pretty well. Yesterday, he did go 0 for 4. But I like him up, obviously, up in the rotation, uh, in the lineup. More chances to get to the plate. And with those guys in front of him, there's a good chance he comes up with a guy or two on base, which is perfect for getting an RBI single or something like that. Now, let's talk about Jackson Merrill, who faced Spencer Arigetti today. He's hitting 309 for straining to pitching. And prior to yesterday, when he went 0 for 4, he had three and two hits in the previous two games. So, seeing the ball decently well, yesterday didn't get anything going, but it is what it is. Every guy's loud and off day. Uh, Eric Getty, you look at the pitches he's going to throw to lefties. 41% forcing, 25% curveball, 18% cutter, and 14% changeup. You look at Jackson versus right into pitching. 274 expected batting average versus the four-seamer. 304 versus the curveball. 350 cutter, 328 changeup. So all the pitches he's going to see, hitting pretty well. I mean, he's hitting 309 versus righties for a reason. Now, Merrill, he's pretty solid at get, avoiding the, the whiffs, which is good because Eric Getty, I feel like when he gets the outs, it's almost always going to be a strikeout. 72nd percentile on whiff percentage and a K percentage. Obviously, Eric Getty has the strikeout stuff, but hopefully Jackson Merrill can lay off those pitches and wait for one in the zone. Now, what's not great is Merrill is 8th percentile on walk percentage. Not terrible. I mean, if we're coming down to the end of the game and we need Merrill to get a hit, I'd rather him swinging than going out there for a walk because a walk doesn't hurt us. Obviously, he could get on base and steal and maybe get in the scoring position, but we prefer him if he's going to get on base to do it via a hit. But you look at Merrill, he's also 96th in expected batting average and he's 79th percentile in sprint speed. So if he does get a single, he's capable of stealing and getting onto second base. Maybe he can get hit in there. Just there's plenty of opportunities for him to get two plus hits, runs, and RBIs. So hopefully he stays in the five spot. Obviously, if he moves down back to a seven spot, it's not like he's been bad there. Um, this season, when he sees four or more plate appearances, he cashes his HRR line at a 63% clip, which is pretty solid. I like his chances today. I think he should be in the lineup at home. He always seems to be able to get those timely hits uh, with runners in scoring position. So I like him a lot today, and I like this matchup against Aragetti. So give me Jackson Merrill over one and a half hits, runs, and RBIs as our third play of the day. Recap our other two plays. Logan's on Brewers ML. I'm on Dodgers and Braves under first five four and a half let's have a three and oh day let's bring out those brooms long overdue let's hopefully make this a very good week for us and we'll see where the rest of the season unfolds we'll see you guys back in the next one also falcons eagles best bets right there go check it out we'll also have day two of the ladder challenge live later on today i'll link that whenever it's live right there have a great monday let's have a great day and we'll see you guys back in the next one peace